Am I being overly nostalgic if I say that there was something particularly enchanting about Pokemon for people born around the time I was? As a child of the late 90s, I didn't have a computer in the house until I was around 7 or 8. Things like toys and video games coincided with playing outside. After playing Sly Cooper with my best friend who lived down the street, we would grab our hockey sticks and pretend it was Sly Staff running through our backyards as the summer sweat made us chase the ice cream man later in that same day. Us two would often just get on our bikes and ride around until we got lost and we had to find our way back home. I was a bit of a scaredy cat as a kid so I remember one time we got so lost that I really wanted to cry, but eventually we did find our way back home. The anime series for Pokemon of course starred Ash Ketchum, a boy who was only 10 years old and was allowed to explore the whole world to his leisure. Such freedom was exciting for a kid like me that was around Ash's age group. I wanted what he had so badly to just explore, to just leave. I was born in 1997 in Queens, New York, but my time there would go on hiatus for a handful of years. It was around when I was 4 years old that my family, my dad, my mom, my half-sister and I made the move to Eastern Long Island. I really loved Long Island as a kid and I think it's a great place to grow up. There was a lot more green than Queens. I had my own front and backyard filled with trees to climb. One time I climbed a tree so high that I started crying because I couldn't figure out how to get back down. There was even one time that I was so high up in a tree that my parents were like, oh shit, and my dad had to talk me down. My childhood house had two floors and a big basement that was freezing cold all the time, which made it extra cozy. For some reason though, the light switch in the basement was in the complete back side of the room, so I remember having to shut the lights off and then sprint to the other side of the room all the way up the stairs because of how scared of the dark I was. Told ya, big scaredy cat. I really miss basements, man. I live in an area that just does not have basements and it kinda sucks. In our backyard, we had a pool, a swing set, and a sandbox. It was just the perfect place to let all of my child energy out. I would run around all day and then as the sun started to go down, I would go inside and play video games. Up until I was in high school, I had a really healthy balance of being outside and inside. Video games entered my life when I was 6. On a random trip to Costco, I remember seeing a display of PlayStation 2s and an advertisement for the Harry Potter game at the time, and I looked it up so it must have been the Sorcerer's Stone game. Unfortunately, and it's kinda funny looking back on it now, my access to high quality games was pretty limited growing up. My parents didn't know anything about gaming, which is totally fine, so they bought me some games like Jimmy Neutron and Attack of the Twonkies. Just crap. But I did have some standouts as a kid. Christmas that same year, I was gifted a Game Boy Advance SP, the red one. All I remember for the first couple of months of owning it was this once again crappy Power Rangers game. But a little less than a year later, Pokemon Leaf Green and Fire Red would come out in 2004, all across the globe. It opens up like every other game in the series. You're a kid in a small town who is friendly with the local professor who studies Pokemon, and inevitably they trust you to do some research out in the big world. Like most people, I absolutely adore the original three starters, and I always chose a new one during each playthrough. My favorite Pokemon ever though is always gonna be Squirtle, so I kind of chose him a lot, but then it would be Bulbasaur and sometimes Charmander. I just didn't have the patience for him to become Charizard, and it also made the first gym a lot harder if you chose him. If I close my eyes and think about what a Pokemon game should look like or sound like, I think of Pokemon Leaf Green and Fire Red. It's burned into my memory, the way the grass looks, the way the trees look, the sound effects, the battle music was insane too. Just listen to the drums on this one. And this one too. I think the silent protagonist, which was something new to me as a child, also helped me feel like it was my game, my experience, and my adventure. After playing Pokemon, me and my neighborhood friends would pretend we had our own Pokemon and battled them on my front lawn. Baseballs or tennis balls would become Pokeballs and we would throw them on the grass and pretend that Pokemon were exploding out of them. 
we would tell each other what our teams were and we would pretend that there were gym battles and we had to win to get the badges. Unfortunately, I only lived in Long Island for four and a half years, but they were very special years to me. It was the closest that my life ever felt like Full House, and I unironically love that show despite how cheesy it is. My household had two parents, two kids, and a beautiful Labrador Retriever who I named Tonka because his gold fur reminded me of a Tonka truck. Looking back on it, it was just this one very small slice of my life that was the typical nuclear family. I was making a decent amount of friends in elementary school, and I wouldn't say I was like super popular, but I was doing all right in terms of a social life, which is a sharp contrast to my later years. Things were good for me and my family on the surface, but I guess even back then in the early 2000s, the nuclear family was becoming a thing of the past. I'm sure it's the same if not very similar today, but Pokemon had a very special effect on kids back then. It probably had a stronger effect on super imaginative, quieter kids like me who were always doing very crappy doodles in his school notebook, but everything about the franchise just made me want to quit school, leave home, and go explore the world with some friends to find adventures. I still remember unboxing Pokemon Leaf Green in my basement. Seeing that green cartridge was weird for me. It automatically felt special, since of course, most Game Boy Advance games came in gray cartridges. Back in those days, I barely knew what the internet was, so I had no idea that Leaf Green and Fire Red were remakes of older games on the Game Boy. I didn't even know that the two games were the same game, just with different colors. I had the plushies, I had the toys, I watched the anime religiously. My parents got me this old typewriter from a yard sale, and I used to write Pokemon fanfiction before I even knew what fanfiction was. I just wrote stories about me being on a journey, collecting Pokemon, and meeting people. Sometimes I would create my own characters, Sometimes I would be on a journey with Misty and Brock from the show. I remember coming home from school one day and my mom, who also really loved reading and writing, gave me some notes on how to improve my grammar. And it's kind of funny looking back on it, like my mom was reading my Pokemon fanfiction. She probably didn't understand half the names or words in those stories, but she still read them for me. Alright, I swear I'll talk more about the game in a second, but let's just get into the real reason I'm speaking into this mic right now. To put it bluntly, my mom was an alcoholic. She used alcohol to cope with a lot of past traumas which are not my stories to tell. And from what I've gathered during my many conversations with family members, she had a very hard childhood. But she also had some very bad thought processes and behaviors. She was diagnosed with depression, and after talking a lot with my dad, a man who obviously knew her quite well, him and I both think that she may have had some form of bipolar. One day, she would be the sweet, loving mother and wife who would listen to how our day at school went and would work very hard to make us a delicious dinner or clean the house. The next day, she would be crying and screaming with a bottle of cheap liquor in her hands talking about things that my little five-year-old brain couldn't understand. She would talk to me, my dad, and my older half-sister like we were strangers or enemies. She would look at us like she didn't really even love us, like she hated us or she was afraid of us, simply for trying to help. She could never keep a job for too long, so she would bounce between being a stay-at-home mom, doing the things that I just said, cleaning the house and cooking, and just being a great homemaker. And then other times she would have a job for a couple months or a year, but could never really keep it. She was given antidepressants, which she would often take with alcohol, causing many obvious problems. And even now, it's very hard for me to remember my mom without a cigarette in between her fingers. I remember even on long road trips, my mom would constantly chain smoke. I honestly feel like the first 10 years of my life were accompanied by secondhand smoke, which really sucks. It's not a fond memory. On the days that she did seemingly hate my dad and me and my sister, she would smoke inside the house just to spite my dad, and she would sometimes put her cigarettes out on the couch cushions. And my dad, he worked two jobs busting his ass to support his family, busting his ass to buy us that furniture and that couch, and she would just do that to spite him. 
Those two jobs though also meant that my dad would be out of the house a lot. My half sister, who was seven years older than me, moved in with her biological father when I was around six or seven. And that meant she would move many, many miles away because she didn't want to deal with the horrors that my mother displayed every night. Unfortunately, this meant that I was alone with my mom often. And I can say that I was never in any physical danger, thankfully. I was never abused in any way, shape or form, but instead, what I witnessed as a five, six, seven year old child was the total deterioration of my mom. Somebody who I thought was there to love me, to protect me, to guide me, to talk to me, to hug me. She, she didn't do any of those things. Instead, she scared me like very badly. She, she put a lot of fear into me for the first decade plus of my life. So on these nights that I was alone with her, this adult who couldn't even take care of herself, nonetheless me, I would hide. I would hide in my room or in the basement I mentioned before with my PlayStation 2 or my Game Boy Advance SP. Like I said, I didn't have many good games back then. So more likely than not, I was playing Pokemon Leaf Green and replaying it over and over and over again. I don't want to say that I lived in the golden age of Pokemon because I feel like that would just be too biased for my own childhood, but I do think I was lucky enough to be a kid for the last few years Pokemon was really cool. Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald are legendary games, and Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum are, in my opinion, the last truly great games in the series. The first four regions of Pokemon just felt inspired and full of charm. Kanto felt like the blueprint of it all, and when I think of the Japanese aesthetic of Johto, or the oceans and volcanoes of Hoenn, or the lakes and forests of Sinnoh, they all feel special. Kinda random, but does anyone remember when Cartoon Network did a marathon from episode 1 of Pokemon all the way to whatever the current episode was in celebration of Diamond and Pearl? It might have been on Boomerang, but man, I remember watching like all of the cool episodes, like that one episode where Ash and Gary fight where somehow Charizard beats Blastoise, which would never happen in the games. So these remakes of Kanto, Leaf Green and Fire Red, they couldn't go wrong. The games looked, played, and sounded great. Even though Kanto is, retrospectively speaking, very simple, as a kid it still felt like there was plenty of unique turns the game took. I remember the feeling coming all the way back to Viridian City towards the end of the game to fight Giovanni as the final gym leader, who you find out is also the leader of Team Rocket. It was like my first huge plot twist as a kid. And there were a pretty good amount of decent moments like that, like finding the fossils in the cave with that scientist guy, getting lost in Viridian Forest for the first time, watching the SS Anne leave and kinda getting pissed that you didn't get to go with everybody else, or finding that underground base in the casino. In Kanto, the monsters felt like unique spins on real world animals or legends mixed in with some truly creative designs. And back then, nobody had the fatigue of the 8 gym badge system which guides you throughout the game. In 2006, I got the Fat DS, the silver one, and I had some good games for it like Nintendogs and New Super Mario Bros. But it didn't matter because I still played Leaf Green on it constantly. I was also 9 which meant it was time for me to go to 4th grade. Sadly, my mom was only getting worse and since I was alone with her for a bit too much, Things got so bad it resulted in one of my worst memories. One night I was in my room, which wasn't far from the kitchen, and I believe I heard a very loud sound. So I left my room and I walked down the hallway, and I walked in on my mom committing self-harm. And it took me a while, a couple of years, to realize what had actually happened. Because when I asked her what was going on, she lied to me and told me that she spilt a jar of sauce on the ground when she was cooking. When I found out what happened years later, it was horrifying. What are you supposed to feel about life when the person who gave you life clearly doesn't value their own? So my parents were on the brink of divorce, my mom was committing self-harm, and my dad sent me to live with my aunt and my cousin in Indianapolis. I remember Indianapolis being kind of cool. My aunt lived in a very new neighborhood. A lot of the houses weren't even bought yet. There were a bunch of homes and a cul-de-sac, but there was way more undeveloped land. It felt like we were in a test neighborhood. I remember the snow. 
I remember people getting hyped up because the Colts were looking good for the Super Bowl, which they later won. I remember the public schools being much more clean and just much more friendly than the ones I was used to in New York. One day I was riding the bus and I was playing Pokemon Leaf Green and this kid was watching me play and he sat down next to me and we just started talking. It's this specific memory that stayed with me because he just saw me playing this game and we became friends. If there's one thing I miss about being a kid, it's how simple a friendship can start. It can start literally over if you have a cool lunchbox or a cool pair of sneakers. The older we get, or at least I get, it seems like the more prerequisites everyone has in order to make a friend. And it could be kind of tiresome. I was always that type of person that had friends from all different types of backgrounds or hobbies. And a lot of times when I would get all my friends together, they would often kind of question me and be like, oh, you're friends with that person? You're friends with that person? Like literally my best friend doesn't even play video games that much. And video games are my, my favorite thing ever. So that just shows you that like, I don't really care if we have anything in common. We're all just on this planet at the same time trying to live a good life. So why can't we just be cool with one another? But yeah, that kid on the bus, I remember he was gushing over how much he loved that game too. And he showed me this trick, which is just total bullshit. Basically, the trick was if you throw a Pokeball, you hold the B button and then you hit the D-pad in a clockwise motion while the Pokemon's in the ball and it'll increase the chance of the Pokeball working. It's total bullshit, but then again, that was par for the course as a kid, you know, the whole my uncle works for Nintendo thing. And to be honest, up until like Sword and Shield, which yeah, sadly I did play those games, uh, even then I was still doing that trick, even though it doesn't work. Or does it? This is kind of a random aside, but the aunt that I lived with at the time had a strict rule for my cousin. She didn't let him play any video games, and he still doesn't play any video games today, even though he's about to graduate high school. So if you're one of those parents, or I'm, I'm assuming you're not if you're watching this video, but if you have any of those parents in your video, just let them listen to this part. Video games are not bad for your kid if you just put decent restrictions on them, you know, maybe like an hour a day or something. and. I was at this very lonely, horrible time in my life, away from my dad, who I loved with all my heart. I was away from my dog, Tonka. I was away from my childhood home. I was, I was scared. And if I didn't have video games, if I didn't have Pokemon Leaf Green in that moment, I wouldn't have made that friend when I really needed one. Video games can make you friends. They can make you feel okay even when things aren't okay. Playing that game kept me somewhat innocent and imaginative. It kept me craving adventure and wanting to explore the world with my Pokemon friends. I think part of the reason I was so jealous of Ash as a kid is because he got to leave his home. But for me, I didn't get to leave home. I was basically forced out, kicked out for protection. I was forced away so I could stop watching my mother drink herself to death. If it weren't for video games, I wouldn't have made that friend and I wouldn't have felt okay. Unfortunately. I was forced to move again. In the same year, like just a couple of months after moving to Indianapolis, I was forced to move again. This time with my mom to my grandpa's house all the way down in Florida. So again, I had to start all over in terms of friends, a social life, in terms of schoolwork. I kind of blame this whole year on why I'm terrible at multiplication and division because that's the year you learn that stuff. I do remember I temporarily made another friend in Florida who we bonded over Naruto. We played like the card games and this one PS2 game I wish I could remember. And it was a lot of fun. There was this closet in my grandpa's house that for a kid is a decent size. And I remember I turned it into a clubhouse. Like I put up Pokemon posters and Naruto posters and it was super cool. I guess this was the time where I also had Emerald and Pokemon Diamond in my rotation, so I was probably swapping between those three games constantly. I don't remember a lot about my time in Florida other than my mom not being able to overcome her issues. She was still drinking, she was still taking medication with the alcohol, she was still collapsing on the floor, crying, screaming on the phone. So after fourth grade wrapped up for me in the spring of 2007, I moved again. I was forced to move again. This time, back to Queens, New York, which if you remember, is where I was born. In the matter of a year and a half, I had so much taken from me. My big house. 
my dog yeah my my dad had to give away my dog because i guess it just wasn't feasible to have a giant dog in a very small queen's apartment my sister she moved my childhood friends just they forgot about me right that's what happens when you move as a kid and kids just move on very fast i lost all sense of stability i lost everything in a way and none of it was my fault Luckily, we stayed in that apartment for 12 years. Well, me and my dad did. My mom finally died in May of 2010. I was 12 years old, just about to turn 13. The reason I say finally is because I think it was pretty clear that she was a ticking time bomb. One night, she had gotten so pissed drunk and was walking around the streets all by herself that eventually, she was hit by a car so badly she was just dead on sight. It's a weird memory getting home from school that day and hearing the news from my father that my mom died. And the sickest thing I could say is that I was relieved. I was a 12 year old kid relieved to hear that my mom was gone. Because you know, when you're a stupid kid, you have black and white logic in the world. So my black and white logic was like, oh, my mom's dead. She can't scare me no more. She can't scare my family anymore. Goodbye. I don't know why, but the adults insisted on an open casket funeral. And I remember her face looking so wrong because I guess they had to reconstruct it after the car crash. And it didn't look like my mom. I looked at her for like five seconds and I started like crying because I'm like, that's not my mom. I don't know what that is. I don't know why they insisted on an open casket funeral for her two children to look at. It was just a, a, an entirely selfish decision on the behalf of the adults to just force two young children to stare at a reconstructed face of their mother. It's one of my worst memories. And sometimes when I blink, I can still see that memory. I don't think the grief really hit me for many years, not until my late teens and early 20s. I blamed her for everything that was wrong with my life. So it was easy to, again, feel happy that she was gone. I ate my pain away. It was like the easiest way to feel good was just eating. I would drink like half a bottle of two liter sodas a day, a DiGiorno pizza almost every day. I would have like two dinners, a big lunch, ice cream every night, Chips Ahoy cookies every night, Pop Tarts for breakfast every morning. I was 330 pounds by the time I was 18. Other than eating, I escaped with video games, anime, reading comics, manga. I think those fictional worlds saved me from being consumed by the harshnesses of my childhood. Video games just let me keep being a kid at a time I wasn't allowed to. 2006 was the worst year of my life. I moved way too many times. I didn't have any friends. I barely saw my family. In Pokemon Leaf Green, really made that year okay. It made it bearable. It allowed me to just hang on. I still feel the effects of those terrible years even today. For example, I haven't talked to my sister in three years, and to be honest, I don't really want to. I just think it is kind of sad that if my mom is still out there somewhere, if she's, if her spirit's like looking down on us, I, I bet it kind of hurts her that her two children just can't stand each other. And I think deep down, we just remind each other of the sadness. We remind each other of those terrible times. So why would we want to be around each other? So I really do believe that one of the biggest reasons I still have a creative drive to make YouTube videos, to write stories, to take pictures. The only reason I have my imagination, my love of fiction and adventure is because when I was a kid, I had Pokemon Leaf Green. And for that, it saved my life. If you're out there and you're still watching or listening this video all the way towards the end, which I know is not a lot of people, thanks to YouTube analytics, I just want to say thank you. And I want to say that if you have any similar struggles and there was like that one game that helped you, you don't have to tell me what your struggles were, but let me know like that game. Let me know what game saved you because it could be any game. And I find that so fascinating. And yeah, let me know like what video game saved your life have a good day thank you for watching